This video is a continuation of the proceeding. It completes our appendix to AWP Chapter 9 on two very important treatises in the Hippocratic Corpus, Perites Archaes Ietriques on Ancient Medicine and Peri Hieres Nusu on the Sacred Disease. At the start of the appendix, we showed you the opening section of each of these works and then we looked at On Ancient Medicine in more detail. After a brief interlude to discuss the Hippocratic Corpus itself, we now resume with a more detailed look at On the Sacred Disease. This work, albeit in a polemical context, tells us much of what we know about magico-religious medicine and its relation to secular Hippocratic medicine. But, as you will see, it also contains a fascinating excursus on the role of the brain in the human body that will have us comparing once again the medical writer with the Pusey Koi. To refresh our memories, the anonymous author asserts right off the bat that the so-called sacred disease is no more divine nor sacred than other diseases. It has its own nature and cause, pusis and propasis, just like other diseases. And, a little further in his introduction, the speaker likens those who first attributed a sacred character to this disease to the magoi, kathartai, agirtai, alasdones of his time. Pejorative names we translated as magicians, purifiers, mendicant preachers, and charlatans. Sacred disease has three quite distinct parts. The first is a polemic, heaping abuse on and refuting the claims and therapies of the magic healers. In the second, the speaker gives his own explanation of the natural cause of epilepsy, its pusis and propasis. His explanation ends with a repetition of his opening thesis, which sounds like it's going to be the conclusion to the treatise. But in his explanation, the role of the brain was central, and he decides to add a substantial excursus on the brain, which becomes the third part of the treatise. After the excursus comes a final conclusion. This structure is indicated by a repetition of the speaker's thesis with some variations at key points of transition. The thesis is Uden timoi doke ton alon theotere enai nuson ude hierotere ala pusin men eke kai taloi pano semata hoten ginetai pusin de haute kai propasin. The disease called sacred does not seem to me in any way more divine than the other diseases, nor more sacred, but just as all the other diseases have a natural origin from which they come about, this disease has a natural origin and a triggering cause. Pusis here, Joanna notes, has a sense close to its etymology. It represents the action of the disease springing up, growing, puomai originally applied to plants, the Greek word for which is to puton. Propasis is a common Greek word for cause in general, but quite often in this work it has a technical meaning that Joanna translates as cause déclenchant, the external triggering or exciting cause of a disease. Nullere would detur mihi alle is divinior esse morbis neque sacratior. Verum naturum habet quam etiam alle i reliqui morbi unde fit. Homines vero naturum et causam eius. Again, in this appendix, I'm just reading the Latin as written by Cornarius without commenting on its occasional divergences as here from the Greek text as edited by Joanna. Now at the end of this polemic, what we are calling part one, the speaker circles back to what starts out as an almost verbatim repetition of 1.1. Toden nosema tuto uden timoidoke theoteron enai ton loipon ala pusin men eken kaitala nosemata hoten hekasta ginetai 
using the tuto kypropasin. However, he adds two important variations. First, having said that the disease is no more divine than the others, which might lead you to believe he doesn't really think the disease is divine, he now asserts that the disease is in fact divine, but only in a sense in which the others are too. Kai apotal tu theon ginestai apotel kai talapanta. And it seems to me the disease is divine for the same reason as the others. We said we couldn't comment on differences in the Latin, but we can't help notice that Cornarius's translation, naturam autem et causam ab odem deum fieri, aquo etiam alia omnia, takes apotau tu, rendered in modern editions as for the same reason, to mean from the same one of the gods. Anyway, leaving that aside, what does the speaker mean here? Is he contradicting himself by now saying the disease is divine? Of course, we haven't read the polemic yet, but we can ask ourselves in anticipation, is this a rhetorical strategy or is it an actual religious belief on the part of the author? Second, he adds that the disease is curable no less than the others. Kai ieton enai kai uden heson heteron. Et sanabilis esse mihi videtur nihilo minus quam alei. This technique of circling back to a previously stated theme is sometimes called ring composition. The speaker now makes what Joanna calls his positive case, at the end of which he repeats his thesis in different words. Hutos hautehe nusos ginetaite kai thale apoton prosionton te kai apionton kai udenestin aporotere ton alon. This, then, is how this disease is born and flourishes. The plant metaphor in ginetaite kai thale is consistent with what we said before about pusis, puomai, from what enters and leaves the body. What that signifies is established over the course of his explanation. And it is not at all more perplexing than the other diseases, ute iastai, neither to cure, ute gnonai, nor to know, to understand, to be able to explain, to know, that's a new variation, Ude theotere he ale, nor is it more divine than the others. Hoc modo hic morbus fit et floret, tum ab acedentibus, tum ad decedentibus, et nullatinus deficilior aut cognitu aut curatu est quam alei, neque etiam divineor aleis. The restated thesis here sounds like the conclusion of the treatise but instead the speaker launches an excursus on the brain. And then, the real conclusion. Haute de henusos he hiere kaleomene, apoton auton propasion ginetai aphon kai hyloi pai, apoton prosionton kai apionton. This disease, the one called sacred, comes about from the same causes as the others from the things entering and leaving the body. Hicvero morbus sacer appellatus ex istem causis oratur aquibus etiam reliqui ab acedentibus nimirum ac decedentibus. Tauta desti thea hosta meden apocrinon ta tonosima te oteron ton loipon nomisden alla panta thea, kai panta anthropina. These things are divine in such a way that you shouldn't set this disease apart and believe it to be more divine than the others, but judge all the diseases to be divine and all the diseases to be human. Haec autem sunt divina, quare ne quaquam hunc morbum ab alais discriminare oportet Neque reliquis morbis diviniorum putare, sed omnes divinos, omnes que humanos. Pusinde hecaston eke kai dunamin ep heoi tu. Here he employs dunamis instead of propasis, 
kai uden aporonestin ud amekanon. Each has a natural origin and unique power, and there is none among them confronted with which one is without resources and without means. Naturum autem unus quisque habet et vim in se ipso, et nullus nec auxilii nec remedii expers est. And so, as we said, within the framework established by this repeated thesis, there are three distinct and equally fascinating sections, a polemic against the magic healers, the speaker's own etiology for the disease, and an excursus on the brain. Though the treatise is and must be understood as a unity, depending on your interests, you could almost read any of these three sections as an independent work. We're going to excerpt and summarize each. The polemic begins as follows. Hoi de anthropoi enomisan theon ti pregma enai hypo aperies kai tamasiotetos hoti uden eoiken heteroisi. Men thought it was some kind of divine business on account of their incompetence and their wonder in that the disease doesn't resemble others. Aperie in the Hippocratic corpus isn't just inexperienced, but often has the pejorative meaning of incompetence, not captured by Cornarius's late Latin inexperientia. Homines vero naturum et causam eius divinum esse puta verunt prae inexperientia et admiratione propteria quod reliquis morbis nullare similis est. Caicata men ten aporien autoesi tu me ginosken, toteon dia sois detai. And, on the one hand, due to their being at a loss to understand the disease, its divine character is preserved. Et per in opium quidem quod non cognoscunt, divinitas ipsi conservatur. Catada ten elporien tu tropu tes iosios hoi iontai apolutai, hoti cata moisita iontai kai epaoidesin. But on the other hand, due to the superficiality of the type of therapy they use to heal it, its divine character is destroyed, namely that they treat it with purifications and incantations. Per abundantiam vero et par abilem modum sanate onus medentur, ex soluntur enum aut expiate onibus aut incantementis. Totheon, the divine character, that is, the divine explanation for the disease, is preserved by their ignorance, destroyed by their therapies. This is the age of Gorgias and the beginning of the art of rhetorical sophistry. The prose, as Joanna calls it, is recherche. The two members of the katamen katada antithesis have a perfect symmetry. Each member has exactly 24 syllables. They each begin with an eight-syllable phrase, katamen ten aporien katada ten elporien, that ends in the rhetorically and semantically clever duality aporien elporien, which employs the rhetorical figures of parasosis, equal or almost equal number of syllables, and paraomoiosis, similarity in sound. Compare the duality at the end of the figure, diasoisdetai, apolutai, as well as the earlier theotere ude hierotere. One of the speaker's polemical techniques is to look for inconsistencies or self-contradictions in the claims and actions of his opponents. If wonder, thaumasiotes, is one of the reasons men believed this disease to be of divine origin, I can show you many other diseases, the speaker says, that are equally astonishing, but nobody considers them sacred, and he gives some examples. Another technique is to accuse his opponents of dishonesty. While name-calling his opponents magoi, katartai, etc., he adds that these people claim a special piety and a special knowledge for themselves, 
prospoia on tai spodra te osabes enai, kai pleon ti edenai. Qui se vehementer pios esse simulant, et ampla us quid scire. In fact, this charge gets repeated in an inner ring composition within the ring composition of the overall polemic. This claim to know something special is a dishonest attempt to conceal their aporie to meginosken. And their therapies are also dishonest. They are designed to, well, we would say, cover their ass. Ten iesin katestesanto esto aspales spisin autoisi, curationem constituerunt sibi ipsis securam. Rather than prescribing pharmaca, for example, which might be effective, but which they could be blamed for if things should take a wrong turn, they prescribe purifications and incantations. They prescribed abstinence from baths and avoidance of certain kinds of fish, meats, fowl, and vegetables, all measures that the speaker points out are commonly prescribed for the sick anyway. Some of their prescriptions are superstitious. Don't wear black. Don't use blankets or garments made from goat skin. If these things don't work, it's not their fault. It must be the gods. And here again, they are inconsistent. For if this were a matter of goat skins and goat meat, I suppose no Libyan would ever be healthy. For in Libya, they don't have a blanket, a cloak, or a sandal that doesn't come from goat skin. Furthermore, if it is things we eat that cause the disease, like goat meat, and food we abstain from that cures it, then it is not the divinity that is the cause nor the purifications that cure it. Alla ta edesmata ta iomanasti kai ta blaptonta, tu de te us apanis de tai hedunamis. Rather, it is the food we eat that is the healing agent and the harming one, and the power of the divinity disappears. Sed edulia sunt, quae et sanant et laidunt, numinus vero vis dissipator. This is the kind of logical inconsistency between their claims and their actions that the speaker intended to expose when he said that by their therapies totheon apolutai. In these conditions, then, I at least don't think that those who try to cure these diseases in this way even believe these diseases are sacred or divine. For the moment these diseases are transferable by such purifications, Metastata refers to a magic ritual of purification that doesn't cure the impurity or disease, but transfers it to another object. See, for example, this fragment on the love story of Acontius and Cydippe from the Hellenistic poet Callimachus several centuries later, in which the disease, thought by editors to be epilepsy, is transferred to a goat. De elinen tend hela kakos kloos, elte de nusos, aigas es agriadas ten apo pempometa, pseudomenoi diaren pemisdomen. But in the evening an evil pallor seized her, and the illness came. The illness we send away onto, that is transfer to, the wild mountain goats, the illness we falsely call sacred. And here some editors think Callimachus may even be referring to on the sacred disease. For the moment these diseases are transferable by such purifications, what's to prevent employing similar techniques to bring on the disease? Hostisgar hoiosta pericathyron kai mageon ap agen toyuton pathos, hutos kan ep agoi hetera tecne samenos kai in tutoi toi logoi to theon apolutai. For whoever is capable by circular purifications and magical operations of removing such an affection, this one could also attract it by other operations, and by this logic its divine character is destroyed. Quisquis enum lustrationibus et magicis incantamentis 
talem affectionem abducere potens est, is etiam alle is artibus ad duxeret, et ex hac ratione divinitatis opinio penetus pessum it. Toi alta legontes, cae meca nomenoi pros poeontae pleontie denai, and that ends the pleontie edenai inner ring composition. The speaker has exposed the inconsistencies and dishonesty in the purifiers and charlatans' claim to know something special, to have secret insight into the divine origin of the disease and secret knowledge of its cures. He now attacks their claims to be something special, to be especially pious, pros poeontai spodra theosebes enai. His technique will be to turn their very conception of divinity against them. Kai anthropus ex apatosi pros titemenoi tutoisin hagneas te kai katarotetas, hoti polus autoisi logu estotheon ap eke kai to daimonion. And they deceive the people, prescribing to them sanctifications and purifications, and the greater part of their words relates to the divine and to the divinity. Joanna says there's no meaningful distinction here between totheon and todaimonion. Et homines decipiunt, praeponentes his lustrationes ac purificationes, cum verba ipsorum magna ex parte se adeum ac daimonium extendant. Caitoi emwege uperi elsa beis do keusi tuts logus poestae hos oiontai, ala peri dusa beis malon kai hos hoite oi uc esi. However, in my opinion at least, their words are not about piety, as they think, but rather about impiety, and that the gods don't exist. Atque mihi sane non de peetate verba facere videntur, velud ipsi putant, se pota us de impeetate, et quod de inon sunt. Tota el sebez auton, cae tot theon, a sebezesti, cae an osion, hos ego didaxo. Their conception of the pious and of the divine is in reality impious and sacrilegious, as I will show. Pietasque ac divinitas ipsorum impest ac scelesta, velut ego docebo. Egar selenen te catairen, cae helion apanisden, etc., cae tala tatoiu totropa, hypodecontae epistastae, for if they claim that they know how to make the moon descend and the sun disappear and to produce stormy and fair weather and rains and drought and render the sea and the land and fertile and other such things by dint of initiation rites or some other such invention or practice, si enum et lunam abolere et solem obscurare et ketera et alia hu iusque modi seiscire profetentur, Hoi taut epite deontes, dus se ben emoige do keusi caetus de us ud enae nomisden ut de iscuen uden. Those who indulge in these things seem to me at least to be impious and to believe neither that the gods exist nor that they have any potency. Quitalia studio habent impe isane mihi esse videntur et deos non esse putare, neque si sint aliquid posse. E gar anthropos mageon cae tuon selenen te catairese, cae helion apanie, for if a man by magic or by sacrifices will make the moon descend and the sun disappear, etc., si enum homo incantamentis ac sacrificiis utens et lunam abolebet et solem obscurabet, uc an egog et itheon nomisaimi tuton enae uden, al anthropinon, e de tutheu hedunamis 
hyp anthropognomes kratetai, kai dedulotai. I, for my part, can no longer believe that any of these activities are divine, but rather in the human realm, if truly the power of the divine is vanquished by the intelligence of a man and made subservient to it. Non utique ego horum aliquid divinum esse putaverem, sed humanum, si sane divinitatis potentia ab humana voluntate superatur et in servitutem redactest. Isos de uc hutos ecce tauta, al anthropoi biu de omenoi polar cae pantoia technontai cae poikilusin. Perhaps, though, things are not like this, but men, pressed to make a living, invent many colorful things, in all domains in general, and for this disease in particular. Fortasse autem haec non hoc se modo habent, sed homines victus indigui mult et omnigena mole untur et evadaant. Hecastoi ede tu patheos te oi ten aitien prostitentes, attributing the cause for each form the disease takes to a god, in singulis affecte ona specke ebus causam deo ad scribentes. En mengar aiga mimontai, ken brucontai, ken tadexia spontai, me terra te on pasin aitien enai. For if the patient makes braying sounds like a goat, and if he grinds his teeth, and if he has convulsions on his right side, they say the mother of the gods is the cause. Si quidem enem capras imitentur, et si balatum edant et frendant, et si dextris partibus convelantur, matrem de orum causam esse ayunt. And they attribute other forms of the disease to Poseidon, Enodia, Apollonomios, Ares, and Hecat. The magic healer's impiety is also shown by their use of purifications and incantations, as was adumbrated in the beginning of the speech. That is explained now in another inner ring composition. Katar moisi te kreontai kai epai desi, kai anosiota ton te kai ate ota ton pregma poeusin hos emoiga doke. They resort to purifications and incantations, and in so doing commit, in my opinion at least, the most sacrilegious and atheistic act. Expiamentisque utuntur ac incantamentis, et skeletissum ac impeissimum meusana judicio face un numen. Catairus igartus ecomenus te nusoi haematite cae aloisi toiutoisin hosper miasmati econtas, e alastoras, e peparmagmenus hypanthropun, et ergon an osion ergas menus. For in fact they purify those who have fallen prey to the disease with blood and other similar things as if they were dealing with people who were polluted or pursued by an avenging daimon or bewitched by humans or were authors of a sacrilegious act. Expeant enum morbo corruptos sanguine Itam que ale iscelerabus inquinatos, aut in justos, aut ab hominibus intoxicatos, aut qui scelest ale quod facinus perpetrarunt. The magic healers treat the patient as if he belonged to one of the categories of the ritually impure. Purification by blood was a real practice in Greek religion. Compare this fragment from Heraclitus. Katairontai de alos haimati miainomenoi hokoion etis es pelonem bas peloi aponistoito. They are purified in vain with blood, those polluted with blood, as if someone who stepped in mud should try to wash himself with mud. If the victims of the disease called sacred are indeed impure, our speaker contends, 
they should be taken into the temples to sacrifice and to pray and to supplicate the gods. U mentoi egoge axio hypote u anthroposoma mi einestai to epikerotaton hypotu hagnotatu. However, I do not think, for my part, that the body of man can be polluted by the divinity, the most corrupt and perishable thing by the most holy. Non tamen ego puto hominus corpus adeo inquinari sordidissimum scilicet a purissimo. Tagun megista ton hamartematon kai anosiotata to theonesti to kathairon kai hagniston. Anyway, in the case of our gravest and most impure faults, it is the divine that purifies and sanctifies them. Deus itaque est qui maxime ac sceleratissima peccata purgat ac purificat. Cae perimen ton catamon hutomoi doce ecem. That ends the inner ring composition on purifications. Tode nosima tuto uden timoi doce te oteron enai ton loipon. And that ends the polemic against the magicians purifiers, mendicant preachers, and charlatans.